<clears throat> Welcome to the StockOptimassassin.com's weekly video for swing trading options. Today is Friday, June 22nd, 2012. Taking a look at the SPX. Um, just to let you know, it is about 10 or 15 minutes before the close, so um, these candles may be moving around a little bit. And I really want to focus on the weekly chart in this video, and then we're going to go into uh, one long and one short trade setup after we go over this. So. Um, I get a lot of questions about Fibonacci and how it works and, and how I use it. And really a lot of people use it differently, but I want to show you how one, you know, one uh, trade setup that I use, something we, we have a whole video series with our members on about this. Um, but basically, you know, we had this huge leg down and, and it, you know, essentially started from, um, this was the previous high and this 1422, we kind of had this you know, over the past couple months had this leg down. We did kind of get this, um, you know, kind of retest uh, where we almost retested the highs and we had this leg. So one question I get a lot is when you're measuring with Fibonacci, you know, which high do you go with? Do you start at, um, you know, the ultimate high? So let's go ahead and just draw that and we'll draw that, you know, from here to here. Or do you start from the previous, you know, the actual leg down? So my answer to that is I typically prefer to go with the, the recent leg. So this was the actual leg that took us down. So to me, this is the impulse leg. And that's where I would measure my uh, Fibonacci from, from high to low. And you can see what happened this week is, or the last few weeks, you know, uh, since the beginning of June, we had a big rally up off this 1260 area. And came right up to the 618 where you can see this used to be previous uh, support where we touched the, this level. This was right around 13, we'll just call it 1360, it's really like 1358 or so. And we just got smacked down and most of this move down came pretty much yes, yesterday and the day before. We'll switch to a daily in a minute, but you can see that um, the 618 is a powerful area, especially when it coincides with other um, factors such as moving averages or previous uh, structure, but like in this case, it was previous support is now acting as resistance. This is a pretty tall topping tail on a weekly chart. And if we switch over to the daily real quick, you can see that that move pretty much happened yesterday. And we're getting a little bit of a relief bounce today. But again, you know, we came right into the 618. We came right back to the 382. So we're kind of still in this middle range, but as long as we sort of maintain below the 50 and we get some sideways chop in the next few days, this is going to be setting up to me to, to make another uh, leg lower. Um, now, if this holds support, you do have some support in here around the 1320s. If this kind of holds support, you know, there is a potential we could break out, uh, but given the recent, um, you know, the, the, the fact that the Fed did not really, isn't really doing anything uh, substantive to boost the market, you know, I'm still kind of thinking we have lower prices in the future. Uh, I think it's going to be choppy. We're not going to go straight down. We're not going to go straight up. But as far as my thoughts for the market next week, um, I actually think we're going to get a little more selling. And then the week after that is the 4th of July, which uh, week, which 4th of July falls on a Wednesday this year. So you're going to get a kind of a light volume week. So um, what I would kind of expect is a little bit of continued selling in the next week. Maybe we get down to, you know, more into this congestion area between 1310 and 1320. And then possibly a light flow back up during uh, 4th of July week, which would, you know, potentially set up a bear flag. So that's, that's all to, you know, uh, to be seen. But typically during... Uh, ho holiday type weeks where, you know, the market's closed one or two days or something, um, you, you're going to get light volume, which tends to favor the upside. So, um, you know, you're still going to have a lot of headlines out of Europe, um, you know, which potential of, of bailout funds and, and things like that. But essentially economic data is starting to take hold. Jobless claims are not uh, turning out well. You have continued economic numbers coming out that are showing more global recessionary type situations. So I still think we're he <clears throat> excuse me, headed lower and we'll see what happens when we get there. So um, for those that are interested in learning more about FIBS, uh, please go to the website if you're not there already. Click on our free trial. You can get our uh, nine-part video series on how to trade the 618 area. And that is free. 
to our MTS members. Uh, so let's look at a couple of trades for potential next week, one long and one short. On the long side, um, I'm looking at Amazon. I've been actually kind of watching this. I'm going to bring in some moving averages for this one and a squeeze indicator. You can see this, the squeeze indicator has actually fired long. Um, and this thing is ma maintaining the averages pretty well. I've talked about Amazon for a while. I actually haven't taken a trade on Amazon uh, because, you know, I, th I thought we were going to be headed lower uh, and I didn't really want to take any long trends, which to me are kind of like ca counter trend trades at this point. Uh, but I'm liking how Amazon is maintaining the averages. You still have a long squeeze. If we do get some kind of further downside, we potentially take a trade here at the 50, the light blue line here. Ultimately, I think we're probably headed to this gap fill, uh, but that's that remains to be seen. I've been saying that for a few weeks and we never got there. We actually had a nice bounce off the 50. Uh, this was a really great setup had you, had you taken it. Uh, you pulled back and you had the squeeze moving higher. Eventually this fired long. Now we're pulling back. So if this can maintain with any market selling, I would actually look for a retest of the highs, which is in the 230, low 230s area. So definitely keeping Amazon uh, on the radar to the long side. On the short side, uh, which is a little bit farther out, I actually took a super small position in this today uh, with some August puts, but I'm looking at BHP. And to really kind of see this, I'm going to switch to the monthly chart. And as this pops up, what I'm, what I'm seeing is kind of a very large head and shoulders pattern on BHP. You can see we've broken the neckline here. I've measured this up from the, uh, from the neckline to the head. I've duplicated that. So you see that this would be a, a potential target down here in the 20s. Uh, that's, that's a pretty steep fall from where we are now. That would coincide with previous lows. So we'd have to have a major sell off for that. But regardless, we have broken on the monthly basis, uh, mind you, we have broken the neckline. We have not confirmed. So, you know, I wouldn't load up heavy on BHP puts right now. I did take a small position. And again, I'm looking for out of the money. Um, I think I took the 50s, maybe 52 and a halves on that. Um, and those are trading for about 40, 50 cents right now. So if we kind of switch into a daily chart on BHP, to get an idea of where you know you could potentially enter that, you can see the lines from the head and shoulders and neckline. We are closing kind of below the moving average. You have the 50, the 20, and you have the the 13-day EMA, the purple one that's starting to kind of tick down. The squeeze has, is exhausted, so you know I think you could pick up a little bit of this uh, really anywhere in here. Look for a move lower. Uh, maybe you get a retest up here around 65, but since um, you know, this thing is really kind of looking weak with the market being up one or so percent today. This is still kind of consolidating, uh, if you will, at the lows. Whereas the market, if you look at something like, um, let's just look at SPY, we had the downdraft and kind of popped up a little bit. Things like BHP, um, which is really, you're not really getting any of that bounce today, just uh, up slightly on the day. Uh, so that's my short trade that I'll be watching. No hurry to jump in on this. And again, um, you know, you could wait to see what happens next week, even the week after that. But um, I would look for BHP to continue to sell here. So you guys have a great weekend. If you have any questions, uh, send us an email and we will see you next week.